This is Tweed. Get your glad rags on, love. I'm going to take you out for lunch. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tweed's Garage Around. In this video, we're going to visit Milestones Museum. Jenkins, go and get Mrs. Tweed out of the car. Yeah, she won't put up that much of a fight. She might bite. So once you've entered the museum and actually walked to the balcony, you see that you're actually above the museum. It's actually sunk down into the ground about 40 feet. So so you can see over the rooftops and the street scenes of the uh, buildings below. And then amongst the buildings you've got forms of transport, um, traction engines, cars, lorries, all sorts, uh, built by three of the main manufacturers in the Hampshire area, which is uh, W Taskers of Andover, Wallace and Stevenson of Basingstoke, and Thornycroft of Basingstoke. So let's go down. So as you head downstairs to get to the street level, uh, we discover a Keeble K3, which was built by Jim Keeble, founder member of Gordon Keeble Cars of Hampshire, which built some uh, lovely sports cars in the 60s. Uh, this was his own personal project based on a 1000cc BMW engine, probably a K engine, but I wasn't able to see because it's sort of tucked away under there. The first display we see is that of W Tasker and Sons foundry work. So it's got items used in blacksmithery in their foundry and items that they would have produced alongside their traction engines and farming equipment. Um, such items as garden benches, iron railings, troughs and such. And then around the corner is a reproduction of the accounts office along with uh, original items of furniture from, from the work like the desk and filing cabinets. And strangely enough, a stuffed dog. My dogs have been warned. And then proceeding around a corner is a display cabinet with a couple of model lorries and a tachograph. And then we move out onto the cobbled road. But if you actually look, the cobbles aren't stone. They're made out of wood and they are the original wood cobbles that were rescued out of the Reading Tram Depot before it was demolished. And uh, this is how some uh, you know, early roads were, were built. Uh, the maintenance must have been a nightmare. And standing on these is a very fine example of a W Taskers and Sons traction engine just before the door where you enter a display for Wallace and Stevenson. And in this area we've got a display of lathes, pillar drills and other machinery that's all belt driven. And there's a reproduction of a belt drive system above the machines and a uh, lovely stationary engine which was used to power this sort of system. And then around the corner is a fine cutaway example of a steam engine with all its valve chest and valves exposed okay. and painted in different colours so you can see how it all works. And then from here we move back out into the museum.
So next we enter a building dedicated to Wallace and Stevenson's vehicles. And there's three examples here. An early steam lorry with its uh, heavily spoked wooden wheels and steel banded tires. And then two road rollers. Wallace and Stevenson were famous for their road rollers and they were sold throughout the world right up until their demise in about 83. Uh, the green one is an advanced diesel roller. Uh, these were very popular with the councils and I sort of remember these still rolling around when I was a boy. And parked next to that is the strange looking simplicity, single cylinder, angled boiler, road roller. Not quite sure why the boiler's at an angle, whether it was to make for a compact short roller um, or whether as the name implies, it was a, of simple construction and easy to maintain. I know they were sold throughout the world and uh, Africa was a market that they uh, were, were looking at. So maybe that was the reason behind it. But if anybody knows why the boiler's at a strange angle, let me know, because I can't find any info on it at all. But a nice looking thing, if slightly odd. So it's also got geared steering on the roller, which uh, Wallace and Stevenson seemed to prefer for their road rollers, um, which differed from the other manufacturers who used the chain linked steering where the chain was wrapped around a uh, shaft affixed to the front of the boiler plate. It must have made for a faster action steering because the chain steering has quite a lot of uh, play in it and is quite ponderous. And then there was a display cabinet with one of the tradesmen's uh, toolboxes with all its tools in it in absolutely lovely condition. Um, how they never went missing I don't know, a very fine example of a craftsman's toolbox. So in the blacksmith shop we find an early Thornycroft 1904 10 horsepower four seat tourer and the owner discussing repairs with the blacksmith. I was in the camera shop the other day buying some notice for you. have been in there a few hours. That reminds me of the very far. It's under a hat off. Annoyed by that. So um what we've still got to do with We're examining the springs at the moment. And here we have a very nice motorcycle combination with a uh, OEC motorcycle made by OEC, a uh, Gosport and Portsmouth based company um, manufacturing between 1922 and 1955. 
and it's got this sort of unusual duplex steering arrangement on the front, which apparently works well and is very robust in construction. Oh, fork handles. Handles for forks. So then we come across this uh, model railway layout representing Chesil Station, which was a, a station on the Didcot, Newbury and Southampton railway line. Uh, a line no longer there that sort of, uh, like many, became a victim of the beaching cuts and has long gone. But the museum have represented it by building a part scale building of the station with its unusual uh, two towers that it had with its iron railings around the top, looking like something the Munsters would use. Um, but like a lot of these things now, it's just a sort of roadway and, uh, and a car park. And this is a Portsmouth tram, quite interesting because it started as a horse-drawn tram, single deck, and then it had a top deck added, and then it was converted to uh, an electric motorised tram. So they got their money's worth out of this one. In the woodyard is another W Tasker's Little Giant traction engine, along with lumber machinery and wagons that would have been used in this type of trade. It's a big lorry. <laughs> Keep going. And then we've got the lovely restored Thornycroft lorry. Uh, seen at a few steam fairs over the years. With its uh, superbly sign written sides. And in excellent condition. Then in the fire station we have a couple of uh, horse-drawn, steam-driven fire engine pumps. One from Lymington and uh, one from Andover. And then in the brewery section with this dray in original condition. An amazing survivor. Started life as a brewery dray, then was converted into a uh, shooting brake for uh, shooting parties. And then sold on in 1919 to a Mr Compton who uh, bought it for his family to live in. Converted it to a caravan whilst he was building his cottage. Um, but they changed the law on caravans on small holdings. So he covered it up in a tin shed until the bungalow was built. And there it stayed in the shed. An amazing survivor of the wagon builder's craft. So then finally we make our way past another Wallace and Stevenson steamroller, a slightly later one, along with its uh, living van, into the Thornycroft factory, where if you go right to the back, there's a collection of their uh, vehicle engines, 
that they produced along with a couple of vehicles requiring restoration. This one is a road sweeper. And as you can see there, it's actually left hand drive. So it's uh, easier for the driver to sort of see where he's going. And then there's this uh, coach that's sort of slowly being restored. And then out in the main hall, we've got a couple of commercial vehicles and one of the RAF uh, recovery vehicles that they use for recovering aircraft. Very similar to the one in the Airfix RAF recovery set. And then this superb marine engine tucked against the back wall. Looking absolutely fantastic with all its copper fittings, copper tubing, twin magnetos. And it's got all the controls on the top all ready to go. And they've got a chassis going spare sitting there. Seems a shame to waste that engine. Then finally, we have three examples of uh, Thornycroft's cars, which they produced between 1903 and 1912. These particular models were raced by the son of uh, the founder, uh, Tom Thornycroft. And um, they produced a variety of engines over the years, going from their 2.7 14 horsepower right up to a 7.8 litre 45 horsepower straight six monster. They also produced a couple of overhead cam engines, their 2.7 14 horsepower was uh, overhead cam and that went on to be the 18 horsepower later on. But they are lovely cars of the Edwardian period and uh, it would be superb to see them trundling along. Not so good fuel in them I should imagine. But Thornycroft, they were unusual for car manufacturers at the time because they actually produced pretty much most of the cars themselves, even down to things like the carburettors, rather than buying items in. And then on the way out, you see this superb vertical boiler steam lorry from Thornycroft. And again, it's unusual in that it's not chain driven at the back, which a lot of the steam lorries at the time were. Uh, this one's actually gear driven. It looks like it's got a two speed gearbox going to a geared rear axle uh, that also has a differential on it as well. And finally, we have the clock tower that adorned the uh, Thornycroft main building uh, that was still there up until the uh, 80s when the site was uh, cleared to uh, build a supermarket. So, uh, luckily, they've managed to save that and uh, preserve it. And one of the gantry cranes is uh, still on the Morrison site. So you're not going to eat that, love? Oh, OK. What? Oh. So, there you go. Little video tour of the Milestones Museum based in Basingstoke, Hampshire. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as uh, much as I do. Um, unfortunately, Mrs Tweed didn't enjoy it so much. Uh, won't be making that mistake again. Maybe a windmill next time or something. So, until that time, see you again. Cheerio. Right, better go and face the music. <laughs> Billy just going back up again. <laughs> right. <sighs> oh. Wrong eye. Cut. Oh. Cut. <laughs>